Right, hello there, um, viewers. Um, some of you may know from watching my channel that uh, very recently I replaced this old machine of mine, uh, this old uh, LG Direct Drive uh, WM14225FD, and um, the one in, the new one's in the kitchen now, and it's up and running. Um, one of the reasons I replaced this was because I felt that the uh, drum bearings were starting to get a bit worn on it and it was getting a little bit noisy on spin, a little bit clattery. Um, I was thinking about over the last few days about what I'm going to do with this old machine, about whether I'm going to scrap it, whether I'm going to send it to the British Heart Foundation, whether I'm going to put it on Gumtree or whatever else I want to do with it. Um, but what I've decided is that um, I am going to strip this down, I am going to remove the drum and I'm going to remove the actual, so I'm going to remove the tub from the machine and uh, I'm going to attempt to remove the drum from inside and I want to inspect the spider on the back of the drum and I want to inspect the drum bearings. I want to see if I can knock the drum bearings out and I want to see if I can get the code off the bearings. If the spider isn't actually too bad and it's serviceable I might try to go to a bearing specialist online and provided I can get the numbers of the bearings and I can get them out of the tub then I might consider ordering some new bearings and a new bearing seal and seeing if I can replace the bearings on this machine and then I might actually keep the machine what I might actually do is what Florence Ballard A3060 has done in that I might actually run both machines together in the kitchen I might move the tumble dryer onto the other side of the room into the gap next to my uh, freezer and uh, I may well alter the plumbing in the kitchen to be able to have both machines running because I do actually like washing machines and I would love the chance to actually have two machines I mean as you know I've got over well 50 odd vacuum cleaners but um, what, what's always limited me has been the uh, space in that kitchen space in this house to have more washing machines but um, I'm going to do this uh, on video it might take three or four parts uh, depending on how difficult I find it. I mean I've stripped the tumble dryer down before, I had to take my old one completely apart down to its component parts to take it to the tip because that failed on me, there was an old hot point and the driver board burnt out on it. Uh, rather than trying to get a new driver board and having to have it programmed by hot point and all that load of palaver I just decided oh I can't be bothered, um, I bought another machine but this I mean, I've had this 11 years and it's been a really old faithful machine this has and I just don't really want to scrap it. Um, I had a comment left on my um, spin video that I did for the other machine, the new one, from a subscriber called Ellie who said she didn't like the new machine, she preferred the spin landing as she called it, the slowdown from the spin on this machine over the one in there. So it, it seems that people don't actually like that new machine and they prefer this one. Well that's just one subscriber, I mean I, I actually like the rundown on this myself, that one's got seems to have a spin brake on it. So what we're going to do, um, I'm going to attempt this, I've never attempted it before to take a washing machine apart, but why not? I've taken vacuum cleaners apart, I've taken everything else apart, I've taken my car apart, so I think it should be well within my capabilities to be able to get the uh, drum out of this machine. It might just take a little bit of time to do, but as I say, we'll take as many parts as we need on the video. And what I'm going to start off with first is to check the drain pump at the bottom to make sure there's no more water in it. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay. Now I will get the camera off at certain points. Um, when when I'm doing work around the back, I will move the camera over onto there. But you're just going to have to bear with me because trying to film on your own with a tripod and there's not many places to put it, it's not easy to do, so we'll do the best we can. So first of all I need to make sure that the machine has got no water in. I think I drained the, um, the drain pump before, to be honest, before I pulled it out of the kitchen because it was down on its side sliding across the carpet. And there is actually some water left in here, I obviously didn't drain it and that was very silly of me not to do that. I mean people might be thinking, what on earth are you doing that on a beige carpet for? Well, this carpet has seen an awful lot of abuse over the years. I've had a dog in this house that's brought dirt and messy, I've got a cat, 
I've come in with my dirty shoes on. I mean, I treat this carpet really badly in here, to be all honest, but I'm not one of these people that's house proud and you're not allowed to do anything in case it makes the furniture dirty. There we go, there's some water now come out of there, so we'll go and tip that away. We'll be back in a sec. Right, so the first stage then, I believe, in taking this to pieces is going to be remove the top. So we're going to have to remove the top, and then we're going to have to remove the front panel. Then we're going to have to remove the door seal from the front. We're going to have to remove the front panel. Uh, it's sort of going to have to be done in stages. But I think most of the work we're going to have to do from this is going to be on the front of the machine and at the top, not so much in the back. So. What we're going to do first is remove the two screws in the back of the cabinet here. So for, for doing that, we've got one there and one there. So I'm just going to put the camera over on here while I do that. Using my new screwdriver that Dorian recommended. So hello Dorian. This is a bit of a break from me doing vacuums, but um, I'm sure you might find this video interesting before you go off to Buffalo in America. We'll all miss you when you've gone, but you will be back. Right, there we go, there's the top. Okay. So for those of you who ever wondered what an LG washing machine looks like inside, this is what it looks like from the top. So what we've basically got is we have our detergent drawer here, the uh, fill hoses are here, and these are all the solenoids on the back. This was a hot fill machine, so it has the hot solenoid, as well as the uh, cold ones. Um, here we can see the tub. And here is one of the springs. I mean, it's a really big, beefy spring on that side and it has two springs on the other side there's one here and there's one just in the uh, on the side of the detergent drawer it just hangs down there the other spring so it's got two small springs on that side and one large one on that side and of course it bounces up and down freely on those here we can see the weight on the front of the drum which will presumably have to be removed before I get the drum out so what we have to do next I believe, is we're going to have to, what I'll do, I'll take the back panel off as well, so we can get access to the back, because undoubtedly I will probably need to work on the back as well. So I'll put the camera back on here while I remove the, the back panel. Okay. So... Here we can see the actual motor on the back of the direct drive and uh, the striking um, there's no uh, the striking differences with the uh, most machines is there's no motor well you can't see the motor on the bottom of the drum as you would on like um, a Hoover or a hot point or <clears throat> any other machine that uses a what they call a universal motor with the, with the carbon brushes in the direct drive machines use an inverter motor which is clamped onto the back of the drum and um, basically I don't know if you can actually see inside there but there are 
Can you see the, uh, as I move that, there's like, uh, you can see the copper winding shining. Well, that's the actual motor, the, right on the back of the drum. Now that clanking noise inside is the actual hoses, the fill hoses for the machine. On the bottom here is the heater element. And there we have, um, basically, the controls that go up to the motor. Now, at some point on this um, dismantling, I'm going to have to, I would, I would say, remove that bolt there to take off the, whatever they call this, uh, there's a rotor and a stator, I think this is the rotor part here that spins round and the stator is the actual part that's inside that stays static, which has all the carbon, the, the windings, and we should be able to see that later on as I get um, further on with it, now it's quite dark inside here, um, I don't know whether you can make out the shock absorbers under there. We might see them better when the front's taken off, to be honest. So let's um, proceed with doing that then. So I'll put the camera back over here because we're going to do most of the work now on the front of the machine. See if I can zoom in a little bit more on that. Okay. So, I'm going to remove the detergent drawer. And then I'm going to undo these two screws here. spring-loaded clamps on the back which I'll need pliers to remove. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What I'm also going to have to do is remove the plinth from the bottom of the machine which is quite simple to do. So those are the screws for the That just pulls off. And this was a source of forever irritation, this was, because it always used to rattle. So I ended up having to put a bit of tape on the side of here. The new machine hasn't actually got a plastic plinth on the bottom, which I'm rather pleased about. This one did. So that's that removed. And then on the bottom here, we have there are two screws, I think, three screws there. So we've got one there, one here, and one here. So I'm going to remove those screws now. And we'll just have to put the camera back on the top. Okay. That doesn't want to come out very easily, I have to look for another screwdriver. They've got tiny little heads on these uh, screws, so the electric screwdriver can sometimes not uh, do it. There we go. Okay, so those are the th 
three screws from the bottom panel. There we go, like that. Now what we need to do is to remove the door seal, so I will need to remove this spring. Which I think I've had off before for some reason. So that's the spring. That will enable me to then get the door seal off from round here. And then I can remove the screws for the interlock. One. Two. And then pop the interlock off the back. And then I shall just put the screws back in here again, so I know where they came from. removing the actual door as well. Just making sure there's nothing on the back that holds those on. get this top panel loosened off a bit more. I'm assuming it just pops out of this does because it doesn't seem to be any more screws. I don't want to be forcing anything and breaking anything, that's the thing, so... It's definitely a clip here. And then there's another one here. There we go. Right, so... That is the front panel. Undo that loom securing strap there, and then I can pull that out and rest it up on the top. And there we can see the uh, control gear and all the electronics for the machine on the back of there. Whether you can see that, because it might be off the top of the, uh, the shot. We can see that just here. We don't need to worry about that at the moment because we're not doing anything with the electronics so I am solely interested in getting the drum out. So now I should be able to um, remove this panel and it also seems that there is a hose strapped on here with tie wraps, the hose for the water recirculation jet which goes into the top of the door seal again this screwdriver is not any good for those screws I'll have to put that to one side and use a smaller headed screwdriver no this screw this is too big I need a smaller screwdriver bit. Is that one any better? 
Yeah, possibly. No, I need the extension now. And that's not the one with the magnetised bit in, so I need to go. You have to excuse me just for a second. What it is, I have a um, set of uh, various sets of bits for the screwdriver here, and I need sometimes to put the extension on to make it a bit longer, otherwise, it won't go where it needs it to go. So, we put the extension on the screwdriver and the bit in there, and that should enable. Very tight. the other one of them. Where are the rest of those screws? I think they're in there. Okay. So, now it should be a case of lifting that off. And what we can see, yes, the um, there's a hose here that goes onto that jet so what I'm going to do is remove that off of there, but then the front panel won't come away, so I'm going to have to cut those two tie wraps off, unfortunately. And I haven't got my wire cutters in here. Unprepared. So let's just cut those off and that should enable the, unless, no, because they're strapped in on there as well with cable ties. That's the trouble, I haven't got any more cable ties to replace these with and I need to be careful when I cut these off there, I don't cut in the hose. It won't hurt. There we go. So there's the front panel removed with the door for some reason that won't come off. I wonder why that is. Oh it doesn't matter, I'll just leave it with the door still attached. So what I'll do is stick the screws back in there again so I don't lose them. Circulation pump hose. So it'd be worth now just having a camera down just to have a look, see what we've got in here now. So what we can see is that there is the hose for the water recirculation that uh, comes through this nozzle here, and that basically sprays into the wash all the time that it's on. Well, mostly all the time that it's on, and it uses it for the rinses as well. And um, what we've got there is the pump in the bottom so that is basically a twin rotor pump on the one side there is the recirculation pump and on the other side there is the wastewater pump out that uh, goes to the waste hose there um, there we have the sump hose on the bottom and that part there that leads off the side that white plastic bit that goes up to the water pressure sensor that uh, basically tells the machine when to stop filling with water. There we can see one of the shock absorbers and looking at that, it looks like there's oil come out of that and run into the bottom. You can see it's stained all down the side of there. So my fears might be confirmed there that the shock absorbers might have failed. They seem to have leaked. And that's quite a bit of uh, fluid that's come out of that as well. 
I don't know if the one on the other side's gone. We'll soon find that out a bit later on. But there we go. That is um, the front of the tub. And here, those brown parts there are the uh, tub weights, which I think will probably be one of the next things I have to do is to remove them. I don't know if there's any weights on the back. I don't think there is. Some machines have weights on the top. This doesn't. They're all on the front. Okay. So, what I'll do now, I will remove that clip from there and pull the pipe off there to free that. Okay. So let's do that. Let's um, do that. So we want my pliers. Squeeze the clamp in. And there we go, that's the hose is now free from there. Uh, so now what I need to do, by the looks of things, is to remove the weights, which is four bolts each side, so I shall need my spanner, my socket set. that looks like possibly 10 mil. Yeah, it's 10 millimetre that, with an extension. Let's see how tight these are going to be. And they're not too tight. time now I should just end this video and start the rest in part two. So we'll just finish getting these off and see how easy this weight comes off. Yeah, that's very easy. the one side and that is obviously I don't know what's inside there that's probably concrete or maybe I wouldn't have thought they'd use steel one so I'm going to write down on there that that's the right hand side they might just be the same on both sides I don't know so that's the right that's the left so what I'm going to do I'm going to end this video now and then uh, we'll start again in part two so um, I'll see you then